everybody. This is Hayes Tech, and of course, this is where we talk about pretty much anything tech. And today, we're going to do my second video on the XTU X1 action camera. Now, I thought I did a pretty intensive or in-depth video on the XTU X1 on my first video, but what I didn't go over was all of the settings. So, I figured I would bring you guys along, and we're going to try to keep this as short as possible because we are just going to go over the settings. And as you guys can see, right here is the XTU. So we're going to also be using this camera as a studio camera. So what do you say we go ahead and get into the settings on the XTU X1 action camera? All right, everybody, what do you think? I mean, this is the XTU X1 right now in studio, sitting on a tripod. I could almost touch the camera. That's about the distance at where it's at. I said in my initial video review of this camera that I have no qualms whatsoever with using this camera as a studio camera, as long as you have good quality audio to go along with it. And, you know, they do make a plug-in for that for external microphones, but... Honestly, guys, get yourself a Zoom H1N or even, you know, one of the cheaper audio recorders or even your cell phone as an audio recorder. Buy yourself a budget microphone, plug it into your cell phone or audio recorder and use that. So what I thought I would do is I'd take the XTU X1 just like I did the, all the other cameras. i put it on a tripod, give you a 360 degree uh, show you all the, the buttons, functions, stuff like that. Then I would take you into the settings. That way you all could get a full, in-depth perspective of the XTU X1 and what it does. Yes, I know, it took me forever to get this video uh, up and out to you guys. But man, have I been busy. You have no clue. There's been so much on my plate. It's been crazy. But until recently, you know, uh, with the way things are going worldwide... I actually have a lot of time on my hands right now, so I figured I would go ahead and start pulling out some of these videos that I've postponed, and I'd get these things done and out to you all, you know, so at least I have some content on my YouTube channel. So, as promised, I'm going to keep this video as short as I possibly can, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right into looking at this camera up close and going over all of its features, functions, settings, stuff like that. So, let's go do that now. Okay, here we go. I just wanted to give you a quick 360. There is your power button. There's your front screen and lens. You want to remember that this also comes with a lens cap, which again is outstanding. I think all the action cameras out there should come with a lens cap. It's just great. The only problem is, is uh, they're not attached to the camera, so you can lose them. But it's great that they show you. If you swing around to this side, uh, this is going to be where your uh, USB access is going to be. And on top is your M button. And then of course you have your mode button and your select button over here, okay? So those are the only, those are the only two buttons on top. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and power it up. We're going to press and hold this button for about three seconds. So press and hold. Makes a little chime when it uh, powers up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get into the features on the screen. If you swipe down from the top, that gives you your Wi-Fi setting. I think that's remote control. This is the uh, lock, so you can lock everything so you don't change your settings. These are your voice settings and, of course, your power settings. Now, if you swipe up from the bottom, notice it says video. Now, these are your video modes, all right? You have normal video, lapsed video, slow motion, quick stories, underwater, car looping. This is what you'd want to use if you want to use it as a dash camera. And then you have your video plus photo. Now, if you want to go to photo settings, you just touch photo, and uh, these are your camera settings. You have your normal, 
photo, lapse, time lapse photo, timing photo. So say if you want to press the button and it goes off in like 10 seconds, that's where you would set that up at. You have your burst shooting, long exposure. Say if you want to press the button and have the shutter open for, you know, several minutes to record a waterfall or something like that, that's where you would go for that. You have your raw photo settings and that's it. Now the, the button on top here that says M, if we press and hold the M button, it has now switched the screen to the front. Now the only bad part about the front screen is there is no touch settings, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and press and hold again, go back to the rear screen. And we're gonna go ahead and go into the settings. Now before we get into settings, one of the features I wanted to show you is, see this plus and minus? Well, that actually zooms in, and you can do that while recording. Just keep pressing the plus button. To zoom back out, press the minus button. Okay, that's as far as the camera will zoom in. And to zoom back out, you press the minus button. All right, now to go into the camera's settings, you press the little settings icon. These are your Wi-Fi settings. You have your auto dormant. I actually have that off but you can set that up for the screen to shut off. You know, say you're recording and you want to save battery. Well, the screen uses a lot of battery power. You can have it set up to shut off at either 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30, or 60 seconds. I have it to stay on all the time, so I have it off. You have your auto power off feature. Again, I have that off but you have one minute, three minutes, and five minutes. Here's your language settings. Then you have video format. Uh, I left it on NTSC. I don't think I need to change that, but you have, uh, you, but you can choose between NTSC or PAL, and I just leave it right where it's at. Your frequency. But you can shoot in 50 hertz, you know, if you want. Uh, I leave it at 60 hertz. Everything works great for me at that setting. Next up is your WDR. Have off, on, and high. Then you have your voice volume. I have it set to default, but you can put it on high if you want. The one thing I will say about this camera. Unless you have the microphone plugged into it, you can buy an external microphone for this for around $12. Without the external microphone, the audio on this is terrible. Just like all of the other cameras out there, I would never use the audio off of these cameras. I would buy a, uh, a microphone, plug it into your cell phone, or get a you know something like the Zoom H1N, and you know use the audio from that. Okay, then you have your inversion mode. You have your date stamp if you want to put your date and time and have it show on the video you turn that on there brand stamp if you want to set that up like i could put Hayes tech and have that turned on it would show Hayes tech all the time uh, then you have your ketones right now i have the ketones on cap tones power tones if you want a shooting grid turn that on that'll give you a shooting grid then your date and time settings, voice control settings. You can turn that on or off. Here's your command list. If you guys want to pause on that, you can read that. But I don't use uh, voice commands. Then you can format your SD card if you want. I highly recommend your when you put a new SD card in there, format it. Now, here is where you factory reset the camera. Say you want to sell it or you're having problems, you want to go back to the original factory default. That's where you go for that. 
And last but not least is camera information. And this is your camera information. It basically gives you the software version you're running and all that. And that is pretty much it for settings. I think I went over everything. Now, if I put this back into normal video, and if we swipe over from the left, this is going to give us our settings that you can change, like 4K, 60, uh, 1080p, whatever. So the first one, if uh, you want 4K, 2.7, 1080p, 720p, this is where you would choose that. Right now I'm running 4K. Here's your frames per second. Uh, your options in 4K are 30 and 60. Uh, let's go ahead and show you like 1080p. Your frames per second options are 30, 60, and 120. And so on. So as you guys can see, I'm going to go ahead and go back to 4K. 30. Well, we're going to go 4K 60. If you think that you're going to be making any slow motion footage, make sure you run at least 60 frames per second, okay? Now, this is your video segments. I have mine set for 10 minutes, or you can put it in auto if you want. Uh, whenever I had it in auto, I would be get some real short video clips, but audio, you can have that on or off. LDC, you can turn that on or off, guys. I don't know what the LDC is. You have your gyro ESI. Now, now this is your stabilization. Right now, I have it off because I'm not using it, but normally, I, I run that with Super DIS, okay? Now, that does crop in slightly on it, but, you know, it really is super stable. We're talking GoPro smooth. Well, I wouldn't say 100% GoPro smooth, but pretty pretty dang close. Okay, next you have your metering mode. I leave it at on average, but these are what you have. Center, average, and spot. Next up is your exposure. You can change that. Um, this is a nice feature because even though I have this running almost all automatic, if it's really, really bright out, you can use this to compensate for that. Turn it, you know, uh, up or down. And right now I'm running at zero. There's your shutter, your video shutter settings. I'm running 160 because I'm shooting in 30 frames per second. Next up's your ISO. I leave it on auto, but you can adjust it if you want. AWB, I leave that on auto. Scene mode, I have it on scenery, but you can change that. I leave it on scenery. It seems to work great for me. You have your sharpness. I leave it on medium. I find on most action cameras, if you set that to high, it gets kind of grainy. Uh, but if you leave it at medium, to me, it looks the best. So, and again, that's just my opinion. This is going to vary depending on who you are and what you like. All right, next you have your compression. I leave it on standard. You could go high if you want. Standard works great for me. And then last but not least are your filters. And you have your normal, black and white, colorful, brown, warm, and cold. I like it on normal. It really, in my opinion, I think looks really good on normal. So that's pretty much it for the settings, guys. I can't think of anything else to show you. Now, in order to switch between video and camera, you want to press this little icon over here. If I choose video mode, normal video, notice the little icon over here shows a video camera. Okay, if I want to shoot pictures, go to photo mode, pick your, pick your option. It's going to be normal photos. Now we go back, notice there's a picture of a camera here. So now, whenever we press this button, it takes a picture. To go back to video mode, go video mode, choose the normal video mode, and there you guys are. If you want to look at your pictures, swipe over. This shows all the pictures that you took. You can delete them if you want.
And of course, when you delete all of them, you get a blank screen. We're going to go back. And we are now back into our uh, shooting mode. So now I'm, what I'm going to do is just give you a quick 360 to let you guys see what it looks like. I can highly recommend this camera. I still use it to this day, and I use it hard. My action cameras, the ones that I take with me, are either my X-T-U-X-1 or my GoPro Hero 7 Black. So when you guys see video footage being shot outside more in the action or underwater, it is one of those two cameras, and most likely this one, because I have a ton of batteries. Uh, I wanna say something quick about the batteries. Any battery that you have out of the XTU, I think it's the, I forget, the other one, I th is it the C3? Um, but anyways, any of the XTU 4K cameras like this, batteries are interchangeable, okay? And as a matter of fact, I've heard you can't find XTU X1 batteries anymore, but you can get the other one, and I'll, and I'll put that up here, what that camera's called, Stroke Brain, I always forget. But those batteries are available, and yes, they do they do work in here. If you can find batteries for the Campark V40 or the Acaso Brave 7LE, those batteries will also work in this camera. So, all right, I think I've said about all I can think about that I wanted to say, and, and that's pretty much it for the cameras and features. If you guys have any other questions, make sure you comment below. Let me know, and I'll do my best to answer them. So let's go ahead and close this video out. All right, well, there you guys go. What do you think? You know, it's not as hard as what everybody thinks it is. It's like using a GoPro, and if you are familiar with the settings on the GoPro Hero 7 Black and up, the settings are about in that kind of category. It's not the same as the GoPro, trust me. They've simplified it to the point where it's very easy very intuitive and uh, and easy to work around. Again, this is what you can expect out of this camera as a studio camera. Could you use this as a vlogging camera? Uh, yeah, I say you could. And I have this actually cropped in, you know, by touching the plus and minus button. I hit the plus button like four times to kind of zoom in a little bit, you know, to frame me up about where I want. And this is a feature I love about the XTU. You can do this while recording. You can't do this using the front touchscreen. You have to set it up on the back touchscreen, but you know, it's a great feature to have. So I hope you all got something out of this video and I hope I didn't keep you too long. And uh, if you have any comments, suggestions whatsoever, post below. And I pride myself in replying to almost every single comment on all of my videos. Even the videos I've made way back, <laughs> I still answer comments that people leave me on those videos. So, you know, you, again, uh, if you have any suggestions for a uh, upcoming video, you know, put it down in the comments section and I will definitely put thought to it and try to squeeze it in, so to speak. So, that's all I have, everybody. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all on the next one.